Claire Zhang over at MIT has a really good introduction to the Fourier series. And uh, for frequency determination, I had always understood that the location along the basilar membrane was the primary determinant of frequency. Here is my take on it for sound. You add up the harmonic multiples to get the complex sound wave. The radius of these circles is what counts, and you get that by the Fourier transform. It's a multiplication process the way I'm looking at it. One advantage, you can get the strength of each frequency at an instant. You multiply two waves by multiplying their y values at each point along the x-axis. For waves of the same frequency, you get an all-positive symmetric image like this. Change of shape is important. The new shape can be cut up like a jigsaw puzzle and put back together again as a rectangle with a measurable area. You can see it again here, multiplying two waves of unit value amplitude. Here is a unit amplitude times a fractional amplitude, same thing. Multiplying waves of different frequencies looks more complicated, but the results are much simpler. You always end up with a zero. Some confirmation from Bartoni, and some more from Fullwood. The radius of these Fourier circles represents the maximum amplitude of the successive sine waves. Now, this is a very simplified version of Fourier using only sine waves. Normally, you see cosine waves, imaginary numbers, etc., uh, but for an introduction to a general internet audience, this simple geometric approach may turn the trick. The relative rotation of all of these circles added together will generate the y value. And you can see here on the left, the circles are in continuous motion. On the right, I show a step at a time. When you move the Fourier circles horizontally at a steady rate, the complex wave is traced out. The Fourier transform works in reverse. You start with the complex wave and you derive the radius of each of the component circles by multiplying the complex wave times a succession of unit amplitude waves. First, the fundamental is multiplied times the complex wave and using a jigsaw puzzle approach, you can put the pieces back together in the shape of a rectangle with an area of about 3.14. Uh, confirmed here using the uh, GeoGebra software. And next, the second harmonic is multiplied times the complex wave, resulting in a strangely shaped wave below there. And the puzzle approach, with a few adjustments, uh, puts it all back together as a rectangle with an area of uh, 1.57, uh, confirmed again with a GeoGebra. And proceeding with a third harmonic, you get a still more complex resultant wave with a number of positive and negative areas. Uh, using a little bit of visual estimation and summing them all up, you will get an area of 1.05, again confirmed with uh, GeoGebra. Bottom line here, you can see the strengths of the harmonics as the radius of the circles, all relative to the unit circle. Adding waves, you just add their y values at each point along the x-axis. And for same frequency waves, you will just generate a larger amplitude wave with the same frequency. Uh, for different frequency waves, a combination of positive and negative values will generate a different form. Now, this source gives a little bit of the history to it. And this imagery will help with some of the more uh, practical and technical uses of Fourier using both sine and cosine solutions.